All right. Got my little, got my little cat who I, it's the baby Yoda to my Mando. Got my Activia for gut health. Now I can enjoy my meal. Now I'm ready to do the podcast. Have you ever thought about starting your own podcast? When I was trying to get to the this podcast off the ground, I had so many questions. How do I record an episode? Where do I find my background music? How do I get my show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and all the other places people like to listen? Where do I find the advertisers? The answer to every one of these questions is really simple. Anchor. Anchor is a one-stop shop for recording, hosting, and distributing and monetizing your podcast. And best of all, it's 100% free and 100% reducedly easy to use. So... If you want to start a podcast, go to anchor.fm slash start to join me and the diverse community of podcasters already using Anchor. That's anchor.fm slash start. I can't wait to hear your podcast. Hey guys, and welcome to the episode of The Force of Wagons. Oh, sorry. Wednesday Awakens. You know. Just because it's the Wednesday Awakens, that don't mean, of course, not gonna be episodes. But although, I do want to tell you, there's no topics yet for me to cover. However, though, that's because there's no topics. That don't mean I can do the ep- I cannot do the episode because of the Mandalorian. You know, we got done watching the Mandalorian, and I'm gonna do a full re- you no know, spoiler-free review, and then we're gonna go on full territory, full spoiler territory. All right, guys. We're going to start this with episodes 5, 6, 7, 8. Alright, here we go. Okay, we're going to begin with, of course, with episode 5 called The Gunslinger. And this is, of course, a spoiler free review of all four episodes of the conclusion. Well, I thought the episode was uh, solid, in my opinion. I thought it was solid. But, you know, I admit, with Dave Filoni's writing there, he thought he did okay with the writing. You know, this, I think it's the next George Lucas, you know? You know, but don't worry. I mean, just because I think he did a solid job, that doesn't mean... That doesn't mean he's bad. No, he did solid as a writer. Although we have a couple of women uh, guest stars of those episodes. Amy Sardais in that episode. Of course, we got... And we also got Me Not Win as the Assassin. And yep. That's pretty much what we see in there, you know? With episode. With episode 5, I thought they did a solid job, of course, you know? 
But although I'm not too thrilled of the location. Because it's kind of a major distraction for me with the uh, location. But although it's all about nostalgia, you know. I thought they would go away with the... Away from the Skywalker Saga. Like plans, new planets of their own. But there is a planet that is involved in the Skywalker Saga. Tantooine. And that's what I'm saying, of course, you know? Yeah, with my little one right here. But yeah, we do have a Baby Yoda moment, you know? But, although, there is a best scene, you know, of course. I'm gonna mention it right here, but I think that's pretty much all I have to say. However... I do want to talk about episode 6, however. We got, of course... The Mandalorians, of course. The next adventure they're going is in space. It's in space and not at the planet. Where they are planning a heist. At the, uh, where they have, of course, planned the heist on the New Republic fleet. However, however, we got some of the uh, characters, you know. Well, we got a subcast, interesting cast with Mark Boone, including Mark Boone Jr. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention on episode 5, it's Toro Calican is the character who's the gunslinger, played by Jake Cannavale. But this one includes comedian Bill Burr, Savacha Press, Lex Luthor, and Mr. Krabs himself, Clancy Brown. Well, he's no stranger on the character, because he was also in Pet Cemetery 2. And the Shawshank Redemption. Yeah, Clancy Brown as Berg, who kind of looks like a Devarian species that looks like the devil. I call him Bezelberg. Yes, there's going to be jokes in here. It also includes Natalia Tanya as Cyan, a Twilight member of Mount Screw. But although Quinn is the is also in there, played by Ismael Cruz Cordova. and that's what I'm saying, of course. Hey. Although we do have cameos, well, one who is another Clone Wars actor, and three of them. Who are the directors of this season? And I thought, and I thought this episode is like the is um, better than the than the fifth than the fifth chapter. This one is called Chris the Prisoner. And that's chapter six called the Prisoner. As I think this episode, I give it this a 9 out of 10, you know? To be honest, this one is a 9 out of 10 because there's Clone Wars actors there. And of course, the directors have a cameo. But I'm going to go into full details in a bit. And then we get to Chapter 7, The Reckoning. Now, this one is my second favorite episode. Yep, this one is my second favorite episode of the season. The first one being, of course, is... It's The Sin. The Sin is my, is my favorite Mandalorian episode of this season. This, the Reckoning is my second. Where, of course... We see the return of Gina Carano, 
and Carl Weathers and Vernon Herzog. But although we do have a introduction of Moff Gideon, a former governor under the Empire, whose life changed after the rebels destroyed the second Death Star. And played by Giancarlo Esposito, not Explosivo. Who you might know him as Gus Fring from, from Breaking Bad. And yeah, I do want to apologize. I I pronounced him Gus Green, who I mistakenly with Danny Glover's character in Gone Fishing, but it's actually pronounced Fring, not Green. So again, apologies for that. And we also see the return of Taika Watiti, or Korg, as IG-11, and Nick Nolte as Quail. The one who's famous for that dialogue, I have spoken. Yeah. But this one is my second favorite, and we see a new planet, however. The planet of not the same planet. Oh wait. Oh wait, it is the same planet. Navarro? And we see, of course, with Grief, with uh, Grief, Scarab, Sorry, everyone. Right before I got interrupted by a phone call. Uh, hold on. Let me put on Do Not Disturb. Okay, there we go. Now, as I was saying, with Grief, played by Carl Weathers, Reef Karga, might have a, uh, re gets a redemption, you know? But his original plan was to betray. But but this one is going to be more detailed on the full review. Now we get to chapter 8. Now this one. Gave me a head scratcher. But, uh, but although I really did. I thought the episode was really. Really amazing. Because of the redemption story. Well chapter 8 is called redemption. Ribbon, of course, you know, what happened after the child? Did Quell survive? What's the plan of, and why does the Gideon want, why does Moff Gideon want the Mandalorian? And knows the name. But although, But although this one's going to be revealed for, of course, episode third. Oh, sorry. For the full-on review. But however, we did have, of course, the, uh... We, of course, got a, you know, a new trooper. Okay, not new. He was on... That trooper was on Battlefront 2 from EA and DICE. But, however, let's see, that foot is really amazing, you know? My episode, in my opinion, is really amazing because of the uh, action. But once Geek City's going to come back, my co-host KFC and I will be talking about this, you know? And although... It's just, of course... How are we going to do that? But, oh, alright guys. Alright guys, both well, this one is going to be revealed on Geek City Episode 8 of how I actually feel about it. About episode, about Chapter 8, Redemption. However, I'm going to say about the, uh, the last three. Chapter 5, it was solid. Chapter 6, better than the previous. Chapter 7, it was amazing. Because, you know, 
So chapter 8, I will reveal it on Geek City. Alright guys, if you haven't watched chapters 5 through 8, just stop the video right here. Sorry, stop the audio right here. If, if you hear the Imperial Alarm, that means that's a spoiler warning. Made do. Unless if you're not a fan. But I will be back to uh, talk about the Mandalorian of my thoughts on the season. But although, other than that, you were warned. Okay, guys, we did, all right, we did, I did episode chapters one through four, but now we're going to get to chapter five, the gunslinger, and we see, of course, the antics of Baby Yoda, yeah, the, uh, yeah, Baby Yoda committed some antics to annoy the Mandalorian, and then, of course, they're going to make a pit stop. But however, we begin with the pursuing bounty hunter. In a dog fight. But although the bounty hunter was killed, when the Mando just tur literally turned the ship around and blasted him. And blasted the bounty hunter. Of course, the Mando it's gonna land on the planet. Why does the planet look familiar? Why do they look like familiar? Planet is damaged by a repair dog run by Pelly Mato, played by Amy Amy Serratis. At Moss Eisley and on oh goodness sake we got the Mando. We got a Skywalker planet. Uh, I thought it would be a way for the Skywalker Saga, but looks like it didn't. Okay, yeah. Although, we go into a, into the cantina. Let's say cantina for episode 4, where Guido was shot. And... Epana... Epana Baba... I think that's the name. Got got his arm cut off by Obi Wan. But other than that, of course he sees work for the repairs. Meet the bounty hunter named Tor Callan. Well, yeah, I I know the name. Who is of course tracking the elite mercenary. An assassin named Fennec Sean, played by Ming-Na Wen. You know her from Mulan and Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. And yeah, she's an abducted Disney legend. No, I thought the episode was really solid, you know. But, but that was a spoiler-free one. But now, if you did watch it, welcome aboard. And both of those, both of the, uh, Mando, Mando, and of course, it goes all the way to deserts, it's all due back, and of course, they were on their speeder bikes. And then, of course, we got, we got, of course, Tusken Raiders, and... They didn't attack them. The Mando gave up sign language. Wow. The only way to get those Tusken Raiders friendly is learn some sign language. It's they're usually like loathsome. The loathsome natives, you know. No matter if you're a Republic or you're a Separatist, an Imperial, a Rebel, a First Order, or of course... The uh, New Republic or Resistance, you're the target. 
or it doesn't matter you're a civilian, you are the target of the Tusken Raiders. However, the only way to sign language, the only way they get friendly to you is sign language. Well, that was a waste. But although, here comes Shan. Uh, yep, so like I say, we got Shand. Of course, the story one is speeder bikes, and then... And then Calican. Using a flash. Using a flash grenade, but... Hey! I can't see! Oh yeah, I forgot to mention that on a spoiler-free review. Damn it! That's the reason I say it's a solid episode. Because that's one of my complaints. This is too dark! Oh, now we got a flash grenade. Now we can see. Oh, come on! Can you at least get a little bit of lighting on... On Shand? Or me not win? But then... But then they finally caught her. With her bridges down. But, what happened to Baby Yoda, you ask? Well, although, Pelly has found Baby Yoda and asked, as if he's lost, and she's going to charge the Mando double for leaving Baby Yoda in the ship. You know? And then we see, of course, yeah, I got my little baby Yoda right here. He's more of a kitten. And yeah, he just loves to pull some antics on me. And then, of course, right back in the fire, once the Mando say, do not, do not let her leave, or don't kill her, because, because the, you know, the, the dead body would not be worth much money. Rather taking in her alive. And then he broke the promise. Well, and Shad just tells... Tells, uh... Calican that... that the, that's the same Mandalorian who betrayed the guild. Sorry, betrayed... The bounty guild, you know? To make the bounty on him? It's all more, worth more than hers. And it's... And ask her to be free. Start asking if she can be free. And then. And then they will be legendary. Me. You know. And offer the help. But although he killed her. He had killed her. So yeah. Yeah I never got to know. Why she was. Why would she want to. You know. Be an assassin. Of how she became an assassin or something, but we're gonna save that for the comics or the books, you know? We're gonna save that for the books, the video game, or comics, but you know. That's my minor complaint. Unlike the darkness, that's my major Although he did take the Caligan's money. And then he hold Pelly, he old Pelly hostage, and you have the child, and then of course, the man who used the flash grenade, and then kill, to distract him and kill him. The man who saved Baby Yoda again, saved Pelly, and then of course, Take hell of his buddy to pay for the to pay Mato for the repairs, thanking her before baby Tatooine. All right, we are just eight minutes in, and now I can do a little bit more. And then we get to episode six, the prisoner. Oh, sorry, chapter six, the prisoner. I didn't get my chapters right. As we know, Season 2, Episode 1 is going to be Chapter 9. 
And we see the Mandalorian. Well, hopefully they have a book at that adapted for a TV show. I hope they so I can read the book. No, see if there's any expanded versions of it. And we see the Mandalorian. Contact with his former partner Ran. The Ray welcomes him to space and asks for a five man job. Join ex Imperial shooter Mayfeld, played by comedian Will, Bar Will Burr, not Attorney General Phil Barr. The Davorian strongman Berg, or Bieselberg, played by Savajo Press himself, Clancy Brown. But although, ironically, he's no stranger on camera, when he played Hank on Detroit Become Human, well, motion capture, and he also played in the Shawshank Redemption, Pet Cemetery 2, but he's also a voice of Lex Luthor from DC, and Mr. Krabs from, from my favorite animation, SpongeBob SquarePants. The droid pilot Q90, and a Twilight woman named Sion for a mission to rescue her brother, Quinn, a prisoner of the New Republic. And they infiltrated a prison ship. And they, of course, you know, with the mouse droid. Of course, the mouse droid, and then Berg blasted that mouse droid. It's like, damn it, Piazza Berg! You know, because he is the devil, you know? It did look like the devil. But then they encountered the droids. And then Amanda destroyed them all. And they made it to the control room where we see a New Republic soldier. Name, uh, Gavin. Played by the voice of Anakin Skywalker, Matt Lanter. Of course, you know, it's just being, just trying to see if he's going to kill one of them. And we see, of course, the Mando tries to, you know, take the good path. Like, tell him to calm down. And he ain't, that he don't want to shoot him. He don't want to shoot Davin. But, of course... Mayfeld will that he will and then the only way to shut him up Davin was killed by Sion they rest yep the good news and bad news time good news they rescue Quinn the bad news the Mando got double crossed by them so so, and then he went to, in the prison cells, and then, of course, you know, and there was a beacon, you know, a distressed beacon. Well, in the hands of the bo dead body of Davin. However, you know, with the droid, yes, the Mando got the way out. And then he's going to get some revenge on the ones who betrayed him. But although Q90 was looking for the child, when they tried to call him up, the Mando just do a little bit of trap springing. Little Home Alone style, if you will. And then we see, of course, with, uh, yeah, with Mayfield. And then we heard of... Oh wait, the first one was actually Bieselberg. And they tried, you know, things like... Like burning him. Didn't work. Try, uh... Using a door on him. Didn't work. Try using the second door. And, and got decapitated. Didn't work. Oh wait, I'm sorry, the first door... But it, Got him decapitated? I would try electro shot. Didn't work. And what about decapitating him? I don't think so. 
How about a door in between? Oh yeah, that worked. And then we see Scion. Of course. And then, of course, defeated her and captured her, too. And then we see Mayfeld with, of course, where he was just, you know, running or trying to contact Q90. Oh, yeah, I forgot to mention. Oh, yeah, he also called him a wise ass before. That's what he gets. Yep, that's what you get. Mayfeld for calling Demando a wise ass. Even though you are a comedian after all. He, thank you for the laugh, by the way. But this Mando ain't in a mood for one of your jokes or insults. But then we see Quinn, of course. And he said, he asked if he's going to kill him. But he said, nope. It's, it would be worthless. And then, of course, the 9-0 trying to kill Baby Yoda. But also, thankfully, he was shot. And I meant not Q-9-0 was shot. And then delivers Quindaran and departs with his payment. But although we see the director squad came by after leading a distress beacon of the New Republic. And we see three pilots by Rick Fayama playing, of course, Jib Dodger, and Deborah Chow as Sash Ketter, and the leader of the, of course, the uh, New Republic's. Uh, Director Squad is Dave Filoni himself as Trapper Wolf. And the three have killed the two. Yep. Yep, and there's a stress call worked, and of course, both men were killed. No, destroyed. The stations were destroyed. And then, of course, the Mando gave Baby Yoda a ward. The part of the stick gear. And the three who, of course, Quinn thought they were dead, were actually held prisoner. Okay, guys. We are now at Chapter 7 and 8. And it involves one, it involves several characters from the previous one. And the one who show, finally have shown up, who is revealed to be the biggest baddie of all. Alright! Now we are in Chapter 7, called The Reckoning, where the Mandalorian, we began with the Mandalorian, received the uh, message from Grief Karga, the one who... Place the bounty on the Mando's head for betraying the guild after retrieving Baby Yoda. And they return to Navarro, but in a different location because the town has been overrun by Imperial troops by the client. And Karga pr proposes, of course. Abusing the child as the bait. But he ain't alone. But although the beginning, however, kind of reminds me of the Avengers assembling them. I mean, we, we go to the sanctuary. Uh, we go to uh, Thorgan. And we see Cara Dune fighting, well, in case you haven't noticed, yeah, she did ha kind of have quite a record. No, not a criminal record, because she is most famous for her MMA career. But in case, in case you didn't know, she used to fight in the UFC. Yep. 
Heather joins the squad, and then we see Quill, the name, who is joining, of course, joining along at Planet. Uh, wait, wait, yeah, Planet. Uh, I'm trying to think of the planet. Uh, I think it's like Efron 4. Well, well, I know. And of course, he's not the only one. He's bringing one of his, uh, one of the creatures and also the IG-11, who's been revived and reprogrammed. But although... But although they meet Karga and the associates, and Minox, well, those are the dragon species, huh? As I, I heard one of them used the Winter Soldier. I mean, in case you haven't listened to the Winter Soldier theme, because you're going to hear that screeching. However, like I say, you know, of course, that's not the only ones they dealt with. But although, Kara is gravely injured. But although, the child used the force to heal his wound. Yeah, you could say he's like a shades of... The shades of, um... I'm trying to think. Oh, yeah. Shades of Barisafi, I think, from uh, Legends. Where she healed the clone troopers. Or what's that, her master? But although... He, his original play was kill the Mandalorian and take a child to the client, but... Change of plans! Right after what happened with Baby Yoda... Healing him up. But although say that... Thune has captured the Mandalorian. And Quail returned. Will return a child to the ship. With one of the creatures. But then we see the client. Of course be with the group. And then unfortunately. He and his entourage were no more. Because as he got a call. From. Gideon, uh, uh, Moff Gideon, I almost said Gideon Hask, played by Paul Hawthorne, played by Paul Hawthorne from, uh, from Arrow, and of course, I, he was on Battlefront 2, but, but it was Moff Gideon, played by Gus Spring himself. And then he orders troops to open fire the building, killing the client and his entourage. And we see some deaf troopers. Wait, really? You saw we got scout troopers, we got stormtroopers. Wait, I thought I thought the whole thing were destroyed at at Scarif, you know? And they were used no more. How were there some and still in the Imperial? Well the ones were destroyed in Scarif. The ones that were killed in Scarab. By Rogue One. And then he arrives. Boasts that the child will be soon in possession. And then Mando tried to contact Quell. But then. A creature was killed. And of course. The scout troopers took the child. And then we see. Quell. Is he dead? Huh? Is he dead? We're going to have to find out with episode 8. Sorry, chapter... Damn it! I did it again! Chapter 8, Redemption. And we see the beginning. We see two scout troopers. Who are, of course... With Jason Sudeikis. Of course, we see... Brian... Uh... 
Well, played by Adam Pally and former SNL star Jason Sudeikis. Yeah, those were the ones who took the child. And of course, we see, of course, with IG-11. Kill them both and save Baby Yoda. Alright, and we see the Mandalorian and Cara Dune and Grief Karga who are pinned down in a village by Moff Gideon. But I did try to contact him, but But although, it's sad to say, that's been confirmed that Quell was actually killed. And then Mando asks, what did he do? Uh, what did he have done? But... However... <coughs> however... IG-11 saved the Baby Yoda. And Gideon revealed that, of course, that the Mandalorian has a name, and it's Din Jaren, along with the past of his two companions, you know? Yeah, but then we get to the flashback, of course. Oh, wait. Get to the past of what happened. On the planet of the Creed. Because it was revealed that Din. That. That Din Djarin. Was not actually from the planet. Of. Man, of Mandalore. He was actually from. Another planet. That of course. Had to do super battle droids. And those droid gunships. And destroyed, and destroyed them, you know, all of humanity. And then we see Super Al Joy try to kill Jaren. But he was saved by the Creed of Mandalore. Who were fighting the Super Al Droids, and we see him flying away. The Man Mandalore flying away, carrying Jaren alive. Yeah, and then IG-11 returns and begins shooting on its way to the building. Once we're trapped, however, within the building, launch an attack with other directions. Yes, and most troopers were incapitated. But although Gideon, of course, was trying to shoot Jaren, but, but he found a way. Well, uh, well, I was gonna say I was gonna complain about it, but you know, but you know, but hey, at least he's smart. At least he know how to way to stop Jaren. Yeah, and they and they were retreating, but although it seemed fatal, and a group including IG Eleven and Baby Yoda. Have retreated to the building again. But then, here comes the Flame Trooper. Before the First Order Flame Trooper, this one is look like a Storm Trooper, but in red. Kinda looks like a Death Trooper, to be honest. And I'm not talking about the ones. I'm not talking about the ones that are really menacing. I'm talking about the Undead Troopers. Yes, the Undead Troopers are canon. Well, they originally called the Dead Troopers, and then they're renamed the Undead. And, of course, it's trying to kill all of them. Set the building on fire, but though Baby Yoda uses the Force, the flamethrower to protect the group and then kill the trooper. But everybody, but it all though, Jaren, however, 
he wanted to die. He wanted to die, but unfortunately, and unfortunately, you know, Kara Dune says no. And then IG-11 does ask if he ever asked it. No, if he wanted to be healed, then Jaren said no, he wanted to die. But although, Jaren, however, got his mask, his helmet taken off. And that's a Josh Darwin scene right here, because, well, it's no surprise that's actually Pedro Pascal. Last time I saw him with Vice, his eyes were gouged out by the mountain for Game of Thrones Season 3. But not to worry, everyone. He's uh, actually. This is Jaren. He's played the character Jaren. Not, of course, Gave him Sabacta. Which does not violate the Mandalorian Creed. Because the droid is not a living being, it's just, he's just a droid. And they escape and go into sewers. But it's this. We can at Denny. We can at Denny's. Well, a little bit of we can at Bernie's reference. And although they did see the Mandalorians, and of course. Oh my god! All of them have been killed! Hilder fled. Oh wait, not all of them are killed. Most of them had taken off their armor, so they fled to another planet, including John Favreau's character, which I didn't know till now. The armorer forges a cigarette for for Jaren after after he admitted that Baby Yoda is the one who helped them. No showing. Hurt the child. And then finally gave him a mud horn. Because. He has. The armor knows. About the Jedi. Wait. Wait. If she knows the Jedi. And I ask. Does she happen to know Obi-Wan Kenobi? Hmm. I wonder why this armor seems familiar. Is it. Is it Bo-Katana? But. But that's my. I'm going to save that for. Uh. For the guy behind Star Wars Theory. <laughs> and then the say he must act like a father to the man, to Baby Yoda, until he can return to his own people. Which is now his mission, or until it comes of ages. Or it comes of age. But they are the clan of two. The group restocks on weapons at the Arbor. It gives Jaren, however, a jetpack before it leaves. Armor stays behind. And then we see, of course, the stormtroopers. But thankfully, none of them. But thankfully, none of them survived. Only the armor did. And the best part, setting one to the fire. To the welding fire. Ooh. Ooh, I wonder how much is that worth. As... I need a Mandalorian armor out of the Stormtrooper armor. Gotta give me one of those someday. And they are going on the river of lava. Which are waiting at the outlet. Well, looks like this is the third planet to have lava. To include lava. First one is... Is Solus, as mentioned on Return of the Jedi. And... Of course, the second one is Mustafar. <laughs> and then, of course, Karatoon thinks they are safe, but the Mandalorian, or Jaren himself, of course, found out there's like. There's like stormtroopers. And then IG-11 decided to give up. It just explode. 
but nope, not in a way that Amanda wanted. But he decided to sacrifice himself, so he's going to the exit and then commit the explosion, killing all stormtroopers in the process. Like they got away safely, right? Right. Oh, wrong. Here we see Gideon and a TIE fighter. Trying to kill our heroes. Yeah, and... And Grief just told Baby Yoda to use the Force. Well, he didn't know what the Force is. So, just hang it a hand thing. And they just wave hi. And then, of course, with... Jaren, of course, getting the, uh, getting it, of course, to destroy them. And we see Jaren using his jetpack, and of course, trying to use the blaster. Didn't work. Trying to use the detonator, which actually works, but, but it, of course, got it out of his hand. And then second detonator... It worked! He's out! Safely! Landed safely while Gideon is down to his death! At a crash landing! <laughs> and just like that, of course, he takes the child to his ship. Although, although Greek Karga and Paradoon decide to stay behind. And although back in the ship, then Jaren built the grave for Quill and de departed before the child. And of course, Baby Yoda was sucking on or teasing on the Mandalorian medallion. And that was the same one Jaren had given to Cara Dune earlier and lets the child keep it. But, and then we see Jawas, of course. And we see, who was the one using it? Wait, Gideon? Moff Gideon? I thought he's dead. Wait a minute, I thought he's dead or something. However, but it was revealed he was the Mandalorian. That he was one of the Mandalorian. Maybe he was, he was the one that worshipped that late, that late Mandalorian, who was voiced by John Favreau, the one who was killed off, the one who got a beheading by Darth Maul, who was the Clone Wars villain, and he got a dark saber. Oh my goodness! I can't wait to see what's gonna happen in season two. But like I say. Next Wednesday Wicked, I'm going to be talking about, of course, is, is do I think that The Mandalorian is, of course, better than a sequel trilogy, or Disney trilogy, as, as some people like to call it, you know, but I don't want to argue with their results, but however, just going to go ahead and say it, you know, that's going to be for another time. All right, guys. It's time to end the episode. And it's also the end of the review of Season 1. Okay guys, that's going to do about it for this episode. Of course of The Mandalorian. And sorry if I'm talking so quietly because I got my... You know, this is my got my little kitten right here. You know, he's the baby Yoda to my Mandalorian. So, you know, always loves to bite me. Although, always love his pulling semantics. But, however, this is where we bring things to an end. But don't worry, I will be back, however. And yeah, also, I got my family inside. And I can't wait to do, write down some topics, and of course... Talk about that, but I still haven't seen Rise of Skywalker yet. Still, uh, and my clones still haven't played Jedi Fallen Order yet. But yep, I'm gonna find see if there's any uh, plugs 
like any outlets to, or wireless TV or you know portable TV. And then we can play Jedi Fallen Order. And then of course see if they're gonna show it in theater sets. And I will of course talk about it. But other than that, alright guys, take care of yourselves. That's gonna do about it for the Mandalorian. And that's gonna do about it for the Wednesday Wicked. I will see you guys next time, and as always, may the Force be with you. Let's go, little one!